and I was watching an interview with the actual Roxanne, the real life Roxanne, and she said her and her mom, the, the the dynamic of the relationship never changed, but how it was put across in the film, it's almost like the mom set her up to fail. Would you agree with that statement? Um, yes and no. I mean, you, you could look at it that way or you could look at it that, you know, we know if you have a newborn baby and some people throw the baby directly into a swimming pool to make, the, make them swim kind of thing, sink or swim kind of song. Yeah. It's kind of like throwing her out into that cold world to, to toughen her up to, you know, I've instilled, I've, I've, I've sort of given you the instructions on life kind of thing. You know, you should be strong enough. I'm going to put you in these situations to test you. Are you ready? Or was my tutorage not, you know, up to par kind of thing? Yeah, she definitely put, she definitely put her in to sink or swim. But you're talking about a 14 year old girl and it, there was wolves. There was wolves in that in that film, serious wolves, like because the same man who watched her grow up after the success was the same man who gave her a baby, who then became her boyfriend. Now the movie never made it clear, but how old would you say that the man was? He had to be, I'm guessing, mid thirties to early thirties. What do you reckon? I would a hundred percent concur with that. He was around that age range, and let's just look at it. What business has he got having any kind of thoughts with a, a very, what was she, 16, 14, 16, 16 was she at that point? 15. 15. 15. You, you've, got, you've got no business. He's got no business, and she's got no business. It, it's, um, that's pedophilia. That's wrong. That's a very, very underage girl. I don't care how developed she may have looked. That that that's off limits. That is totally off limits. And as you said, there were predators for days, and there wasn't all shown. But that was the the, the one of the main ones who had a major impact in her life from that age all the way up until pretty much the end of the movie. And it turned out to be. A terrible individual, man. How he, how, how it was shown that he dealt with her because that we only seen it through one side. But this man, I mean, just by his choice of being with a girl that young, shows you that the man's got no morals anyway. And how he dealt with her, like mm. the way he battered her and sold his own son back to her, sold his own son for ten thousand dollars. That was yeah. crazy. But well, okay, okay. So we, 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 we've jumped to there. So she's sitting in the office with a lawyer. Yeah. And the lawyer says, you got to be out of your mind. Are you serious? You want me to put together some kind of legal document to, to facilitate the sale of your baby back to yourself? That's crazy, man. He's crazy. You know, if you're going to pay me, yeah, I'll do it. Um... But uh, you know, I've got to. You could uh, basically, I'm going to do it like anonymously, kind of thing. Um, and then the the most poignant statement he says in that is, "What is wrong with you people? What did he mean by that? <laughs> you people, as in who people? Black folk? Is he talking about? Or I looked at it like he's, he's talking, talking about, about people black people the... or the people in the projects? Exactly. Exactly." Because that I is ridiculous. That was, that was ridiculous. Come on, I mean, to sell your own child. That's ridiculous. Mm. And the I, fact she I mean, entertained was it was even worse. Like, I mean, she... Go on, sorry. No, I was saying the fact she even entertained it was even worse. Yeah. Because that seemed like a situation mm. for the for the police. Because that's, that's what you call ransom, ain't it? Is it ki- kidnapping and ransom yeah. it? That's, I mean I thought she could have went to the police with that you yeah, thought so. and being a mother generally the, the law always favour favours the mother so that or that whole situation I don't know whether that was creative license in there or you know was that indeed a, a, a true part of her life story trust I mean I, trustfully they wouldn't have exaggerated her life to that kind of level 
Um, but as you say, it should have just been a call to the Polizia or to CPS, whoever, whatever authority needed to be um, involved with. Like, look, this dude is abusive. Look at my the hospital records. I've never really pressed charge on him. But look, you know, I'm away from him now. He's got my son. I need him back. What can you do? And I'm that pretty sure they would have did is something. Is a very for logical. Yeah, of course. It was sad. It was a sad state of affair, man. But it did. We didn't really get to see none of her success. Besides the one little, the one side of success that I would say we've seen was the tour, which the tour it looked to be a very successful <laughs> tour. But at the end, you know what happened? She yeah. she got she never made a penny from that tour. And I know the artists of these of them times that was a regular thing mm-hmm. but it goes back to what the lawyer said and although it, as bad as it sounds there was no nothing legal about it there was no contracts in place nothing you just went on with the road and then all of a sudden the guy just come and said yo i lost all the money that's it and we know that he was like we know we, we know he was lying we know we know that was we know he was lying the excuse he gave, I went to the, the the restroom or whatever, and he had two bags with him, one bag full of money, and the next bag full of money. He went there, and when he went to pick it up, there was only one bag there. That and everyone, Roxanne Chante knew she, he was blagging. The sister who she was battle rapping with, like throughout the tour, who gave her the money, was like, "Look, you know, you're a sister, man. You know what I mean? Look, I know what the deal is. You know, we know what kind of things that's going on in our ear, but." Look, I got you, man. Just hold this money kind of thing. Everyone knew he was blagging. Yeah, he, 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 he was one of the worst. And the fact that she lost all that money, but she she was she was given... Like, the film made a big deal of showing that she was given all these gifts. Gift after gift, but they was all from these men. And the manager mm. really fell out with her about this. Like, you keep taking gifts. Like, that's something that a whore would do kind of thing. And then, yeah, it kind of left your mind to question, like, what did they get for them gifts? Mm. Was she exchanging them gifts in order for sexual favors, or the film did it make it clear? I think they did that purposely just to keep people like, you know, raising this point now. Well, did she or didn't she? You know, that bit of suspense kind of thing. I mean, trustfully, she, you know, she didn't entertain that kind of thought at all. And she was just young and naive and thinking, raw because I'm successful and, you know, I'm a good battle rapper. Um, people are, you know, they want to be aligned with me of sorts, of sorts and want to give me gifts. So, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll take that angle versus that she was trying, she was actually giving up stuff for, for the team then. Yeah, man. One of the last points I want to make on the film before we wrap up. I think it was almost. It, it was good. It was it was good and bad in the same in the same sentence where how they included Nas. Now, she was quite a cutthroat individual throughout the film. She spoke to people in the most aggressive way, like to to kind of build on that. There was like a guy like a chubbyish type youth who kept coming over. I want to battle you. I want to battle you. And she was dealing with this you in the in in the most harsh way. Like, I don't want to battle you. You ain't got enough money. You know, like just really dealing with him like that. All of a sudden, Naz comes around. And she was nothing like that. But remember, Naz was never... You didn't know what Naz was going to be at the time. You didn't know Naz was going to be the superstar that he is today or that he was during the 90s. You didn't know that Nas was going to be like an icon in rap. So why all of a sudden in, is the film, and this is something that I don't get what directors do, why in the film was Nas treated with such respect when all these other children and youth were treated so harshly? But then this, because it was Nas, it was almost like if we show that Nas was spoken to aggressively, he won't give us the clearance to use him because that's what I think it was. And I know she said to him, ah, next time I see you, I have your rhymes and all that. But at the end of the film, it was almost like she knew that he was going to be this icon that he is today. And I just think that kind of made the film a little bit cheesy that you, you pick and choose uh, who. Yeah, yeah, what are you saying? I, I, hear, I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. I see it a little bit different. Um, 
Because the first time you think about it, the first time Nasir approached her, he just froze in it and he couldn't, he, he couldn't, he couldn't even get any bars out and nothing. But before he was saying nothing, he was saying something. She was like, "Oh, you want to battle me?" Ah, oh, da 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 da. She didn't go as hard as she did with the first few, to, as you as you point out, most definitely. But when he came through the second time, again, uh, you know what? Thinking about it, yeah, she was she was definitely she, she well from a level ten where she was at my you at the start, the chubby you. And then how she was dealing with um, Naz was was probably from a ten to a five, so there was definitely a difference. There's definitely a difference. Which I'd say is a, um, a directional flaw, because the director should have looked at it and said, "We have to remain. We got to keep the same way of treating people throughout the film, because at the time she was the hot, the hot, the hotness. She was the the thing, the star, and Naz was nobody, and nobody knew what he was going to be." So why all of a sudden in the film, it's almost like they knew they wouldn't get the clearance if they're shown it any other way. And I just think for these films to be taken serious, you have to show the same style of, of approach to everybody. And that's, that's the main thing. And that's one of the last things I'd say. But overall, I'll give it a six and a half out of 10 based on the fact that I've never heard of Roxanne before this. It was before my time. And I think that after watching that, the film done enough for me to want to see what she was about. So I definitely give it a six and a half out of ten. What do you think, Norma? I'll give it. I'll give it a little bit higher than that. I'm going to give it a seven. I'm going to give it a seven out of ten. Uh, my criticism of it, as you've highlighted, is there wasn't as much about her musical success and the type of music, other than that one track kind of thing. And, and she was more than just one track, clearly. So yeah, that would be my only criticism, but it's definitely worth a watch. It's definitely worth a watch. It's a, it's a good, well put, uh, well put.